This video is a basic introduction of uh, two substances called acids and alkalines. So uh, these substances when dissolve in water they form solutions that uh, have very different properties. So before we go into the uh, different properties let's look at some of the similarities. So they are similar in a way that uh, two of them when added when dissolved in water, they uh, form aqueous solutions. And these aqueous solutions, uh, they are very good conductor of electricity. Good conductors of electricity. And one of the, the other similarity is uh, the strong acid and uh, strong alkalines. Okay, the strong version of them are all corrosive. So these are some of the similarities between the two. So what about the differences? So some of the differences are for us to tell an acid and an alkaline apart. One is taste. So acids typically taste sour, whereas alkalines taste bitter. Another way is by feeling the liquid. Uh, but you cannot feel like uh, really strong versions because they're corrosive but uh, for the less strong acids and alkalines you can feel it and you will realize that alkalines give you a slippery and a soapy feel so you can imagine the soap that you use they are actually alkalines because they have this feeling whereas the acids you don't feel like that uh, the other way is uh, with what we call a litmus test. So I'm going to go through this a little bit in uh, greater detail. But essentially when you dip a litmus paper into an alkaline, it turns a red litmus to a blue. Red litmus becomes blue. If it's blue, it stays blue. And for acid, if you put a blue litmus, it becomes red. And if it's a red litmus, you put in an acid, it stays red. Okay. So uh, another of the difference is uh, when they are reacted with uh, active metals. So it's a reaction with active metals. So when you put them with uh, active metals, uh, put an acid, they actually form a byproduct, and it also forms hydrogen gas. Whereas if you put uh, active metal and uh, go through a chemical reaction with, alcohol, uh, with alkaline, it doesn't produce a hydrogen gas. Uh, same thing if you do a reaction with carbonate uh, substances, carbonate. The acid will actually react with this uh, carbonate substances to form carbon dioxide as a byproduct and for alcohol uh, alkalines you do not have uh, this production of a byproduct so how do we differentiate and uh, how do we measure the uh, acid and alkalines and how strong they are so we actually use a method called the uh, pH system or the pH scale so essentially it is a scale from 0 all the way to 14 so all the way to the left we have the strongest acids so this is the strongest and with actually 7 is called a neutral point where pure water is so pure water is neither an acid or an alkaline where 14 is the strongest alkaline So this is where pure water is, it's completely neutral. So the numbers as it gets bigger from 0 to 7, it gets less and less acidic. So uh, a substance with 0 pH value is more acidic than a substance with say 6 uh, pH value. Whereas in this way as well, is a weak alkaline and it gets stronger as you move down so the the substances nearest to 7 are weak 
and the one on the extremes from 0 or the extreme on the right, 14, these are the strong acids and alkalines. So using this uh, scale, we can also talk about a concept called neutralization. So say we have a very strong acid and uh, the, acidic, uh, the pH value is, uh, for example, uh, 2. And we want to uh, neutralize this, so we want to increase the, the pH value, uh, make it closer to 7 uh, so that it's not so acidic. We can actually put either alkaline solutions or even we can put water, anything that's higher than this value. So the pH of the solution, so the mixture will actually give you a higher pH. So it's nearer to 7, so it's more neutral, so we call that neutralization. Uh, likewise, if we have a strong alkaline, uh, strong uh, so we say we have a strong alkaline, we can put it acid or we can put in uh, water so that you will get closer to 7. So you will get nearer to the neutral value and we can call that uh, neutralization as well. So with this knowledge, let's look at how we can determine whether a solution is uh, alkaline or an acid. So put this away. Get this rid of this. Okay. So the first way uh, is what we call the litmus test. So we talked briefly about the litmus test. So essentially, what it is is you use a uh, paper called a litmus paper. Uh, and they are actually con they are actually made of uh, dyes that would actually uh, change color based on uh, the substance, whether it's acidic or alkaline. So if you dip a uh, red color, if you did a uh, litmus paper and it becomes red, uh, that means it is a strong acid. So if it's a weaker acid, it's actually uh, light, light red or pink. So it's a weak acid. And if you dip a blue, uh, if you dip a litmus paper into the the solution and it becomes uh, light blue, it's actually a weak alkaline. And if it's uh, alkaline, and if it's a uh, strong blue, then it's a strong one, strong alkaline. We can also use a, a test called the uh, universal indicator. So the universal indicator, when dipped into the solvent, the acid or the alkaline, it actually create different colors. So you can actually match the colors with uh, the color scheme provided with the universal indicator to check uh, which, whether it matches to the colors of an acid or it matches with the color of the alkaline. So the last way you can actually measure is using a lab equipment called the pH meter. So this is actually an electronic sort of um, equipment where you can put it into the solvent and then it will give you a value of the pH value. And based on the pH value that we got, went through just now, you can know it, whether it's an acid or whether it's an alkaline. And this probably will be a more accurate sort of way of measuring.